Hey guys, Pete here with another review. Today we're going to be looking at a uh, multi-tool that I just picked up. It's the Leatherman Wingman. And I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to Couch Trooper 69 real quick, one of our loyal viewers. Uh, he indirectly basically influenced me to buy this guy. Uh, I've been looking for a new multi-tool for a while and I got talking with him on one of our other videos. Uh, and he basically mentioned this, uh, this great little multi-tool and I actually hadn't come across him yet. I was looking at things like the Skeletool. Uh, but this is actually a little bit cheaper than the Skeletool, about 30 bucks as opposed to 40 on Amazon right now. And it's bigger, which in my opinion is kind of an important thing for me. Uh, it's almost a full-size multi-tool. It's just a little bit smaller than your average full-size Leatherman, which is pretty much ideal for me. So let's get into things here. We've got the, uh, the nice little Leatherman box with as much branding as they can physically put on this box. Crack her open. Inside you're going to get the multi-tool, obviously. And if I can get this out of here... There we go. This is basically a very large little document here. Folds out and basically walks you through all of the different uh, attachments and tools on your given multi-tool, depending on what model you have. It's also kind of cool because you can look at other models of multi-tools and just see what other options there are. This particular version has 14 tools and has 420 high carbon stainless steel, I believe. As you can see here, it's got this nice little pocket clip. Uh, got Leatherman on it, of course, because, you know, put branding on everything you can. Um, I've carried this right side and left side, and intuitively you'd say that it's probably ambidextrous. Um, though I will say it felt a little weird on my left side, more so than just because I'm a righty and not a lefty. Uh, it genuinely felt a little off balance, I guess, because of the side the clip was on. So just keep that in mind. I'm sure you can use it ambidextrously on either side. Uh, it just felt a little weird when I tried it. Um, one thing that you will notice, which is actually more useful than you'd think, uh, the handles here, as you can see, are actually kind of curved. It's got this subtle little curve to it. Uh, it's not two perfect rectangles like you'll have in a lot of multi-tools. And that actually helps more than you'd think, because that subtle little curve locks right into the meat of your hand really, really well. And it locks you in nice and tight, which is important when you're using a tool like pliers. You need a good grip that when you're pulling on something, your hands can't slide off of it too easily, which normally is accomplished just by the fact that it's angled out like this. But that extra little lip helps quite a lot. Now the main reason I got this guy in particular was for the wire cutters and the pliers. What I had been using prior to this was this very junky little um, $8 I think I got it for at a flea market. Little multi-tool. Uh, it's called Traveler. I don't even know if that's a, a brand you can find online or just at shitty flea markets. Um, but you know what? It's, it's withstood the test of time. I got this about a year ago and it's still kicking just fine. Uh, the wire cutters work great, the pliers work great, uh, and surprisingly enough it has a feature most multi-tools don't, uh, which is that it locks. Like, like actually locks. This little black piece back here, that is actually a locking mechanism. Depress here and it opens it up. Uh, even this guy doesn't have it, and most Leathermans don't until you get to a slightly pricier range. It does have spring-loaded pliers and whatnot. Maybe I'll do a review of this guy, because for eight bucks, it works pretty darn well. But again, uh, just wasn't what I needed because he's kind of junky. The main issue I had was that, if you try and see here, as I put more force on than is required to just barely close the pliers, the handles will move. You'll hear that crunching. It's just not made that well. I mean, it's stood up so far and I've put a fair amount of force on it at times, um, but it's just a little too junky for the kind of tasks that I have. The Leatherman, of course, doesn't have any of these issues. He's nice, well-built, uh, good quality steel, and a lot of it, these spacers, or not sorry, these spacers, these handles, uh, are actually fairly thick at their points. And so, you know, you've got a lot of rigidity here, which is nice. I can really feel like I can put a lot of force behind it and get through a lot of material. Now, I will say one, not so much a gripe, just kind of curious. Uh, if you look here at the wire cutters, they don't actually close all the way. Now they're perfectly parallel, which tells me that they're machined properly. It's not a defect. It's kind of hard to see what I'm talking about there, but that little gap right there between the wire cutters, they don't actually meet. Um, I don't know if they're supposed to or not, but I'm going to assume they're not supposed to, and that's just the way Leatherman designed them for whatever reason. Um, but they do still work. I've just got a little twist tie here like you'd find uh, holding some kids' toys to the packaging, and it cuts just fine. Um, so, you know, whatever. And you can make the meat if you really put some force behind it. Not really an ideal amount of force, it's actually quite a lot. Um, but it still works, so I can't really complain there. Now let's get into some of the other tools for a moment. On this side of the handle, what you have are two little tools here. Classic, I'm sure you're very familiar with them, a Phillips and flathead screwdriver. Um, the Phillips head is, of course, a little two-dimensional. It's a little flat, uh, but it does still work just fine. And of course, your flathead screwdriver is nice and broad on this side and works just fine. Now, 
as I was saying before, they don't actually lock, not truly anyway. They kind of click into place there with this little little spring, but it's not a true lock or anything, so they will fold over if you put force on them, whatever. Uh, you're not going to be putting a lot of force on that tool in particular. Come over to this side. Three more tools over here. You've got, starting with this guy, a box cutter, which is a very nice little package opener. Just like on my Gerber, it's a little uh, chisel ground, hook shape, digs into packages pretty well. Then over here you have another flathead screwdriver that has, see if you can focus in on that, eh, kind of, sort of, there you go. I've got a little ruler with inches and centimeters, which is nice, and then another little more precision sized uh, flathead screwdriver, which is nice to have, and then a file which feels fairly good, it's got a nice little burr on it, feels like it would work fairly well. Haven't had a chance to use it on anything yet, but I'll bet you that'll work just fine. And then lastly, the bottle opener slash can opener. Uh, the main difference between a bottle opener, a can opener, or a combination. Bottle opener, this portion here will be flat. A can opener will be angled and chisel ground like this so that it can dig into the top of the can, but it can be used for both. And then lastly, you've got this guy down here, which I believe is a wire stripper. So that's a nice little feature to have. Now, let's just close this guy up. There are two more tools in here very important tools, you've got your knife. What everyone's been looking for, right? Um, very nice little, uh, uh, sorry, not chisel ground, very nice little hollow ground blade here, very attractive looking. It is a, uh, a compound little, um, it's got your ser partially serrated and partially plain edge, which I have already said I'm not a fan of. Personally, I don't find serrated edges very useful or aesthetically pleasing. That being said, they do work, um, and for some people it's, it's their thing. But it's just not mine, but whatever. Best of both worlds, I have the option for both, I suppose. Uh, and they're both relatively sharp. Nothing crazy, nothing to write home about, but you know what? Even the serrations are fairly sharp, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, and unlike the other tools, this does actually have a lock. In this case, it is a little liner lock right in there. Just to press that, close it. It is labeled as one hand opening, and it is. It just takes a little bit of uh, bit of working to actually get through there because it is a little sticky at first. Then the last tool over here is the scissors, which uh, this is my last little gripe about this. So this bar right here is a spring. They are spring-loaded scissors, which are great. But if you close them, it doesn't really deploy yet. You have to really, really press them down in order to get this locking mechanism here to engage and for this spring here to properly engage. That being said, once it's down, they work just fine. Get my paper back here. You can cut through, no problem at all. They cut clean through all the way to the tip, no issues at all. Really nice pair of scissors there. Um, so no complaints other than the fact that it's a little hard to get that to actually lock and engage. Uh, but that being said, they work just fine. Close that up. Oh, uh, sorry, there's one more gripe I have about it, actually. When you close it back into the frame, there, it's it's flush, it's about where it should be, as you can see, but you can keep pushing it further in. Like, if you were, weren't paying attention, you just pressed it in. It dips in quite a bit, and it actually gets a little stuck down there. Um, so it can over-travel a bit, but really not a huge deal. That pretty much covers all the tools on there. Uh, again, you've got your needle nose pliers, your standard pliers, your wire cutters, and another little circle down here, which I guess could be a wire stripper. I'm not quite sure, honestly, or if that's there at all for any actual purpose or just because that's part of the manufacturing. But anyway, that covers basically all the tools. I haven't had a lot of time to use it, unfortunately. I've only had it for about a week or so. But so far, I'm impressed. It's done everything I've asked it to. And for 30 bucks, it's a pretty reasonable price. For $10 less than the Skeletool, you get what's almost a full-size multi-tool, which is what I was looking for. I wanted something that I could really use the pliers with a lot of force, that I could use the wire cutters with a lot of force. I've got a lot of things I need to cut through, a lot of different gauges of wire, and so far this has managed pretty much everything I need it to. Um, Weight-wise, it's still relatively lightweight because it is a little bit smaller than a full-size multi-tool, so that's a nice little added feature there. Uh, but as I said, I haven't had a lot of time to use it yet, so I don't know, there might be some flaws of this that I haven't found yet, but so far it's working just fine out of the box. So again, a special thanks to Trooper 69 for indirectly recommending this great little tool for me. I hope you find this review useful if you haven't purchased one for yourself yet. I do highly recommend it. It's a great little option so far, and it certainly competes with every other multi-tool I've played around with. Now that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in regards to the Little Leatherman Wingman. Again, great little option for the price. 
Um, though, for my few loyal viewers who have stuck with me through this surprisingly long review, I do want to just give you guys a little uh, little hint at what's to come. I have been alluding to a new knife purchase for the last uh, couple of weeks, actually, if not a couple of months. Something in the $100 to $150 range. Well, it turns out I've probably used up all of my good luck for the next 15 years, because I actually won another little raffle thing and got a nice little chunk of change for it. Because of that, I put it towards the next knife, and now we're looking at something in the $200 range, guys. I'm talking S35VN, I'm talking aluminum, or sorry, uh, titanium handle scales, anodized hardware, anodized backspacer. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I can't wait. I'm very excited for it. It should be coming in by the end of this week, and I'll hopefully try and have a video for you guys by the end of next week. Um, so for now, just let this kind of satiate your appetites and uh, enjoy this little review. But yes, very excited. I think you guys are absolutely going to love what's to come. The company is, is great. We'll talk about them more in that video as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little teaser. But with that being said, I think that now covers officially everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So thanks again for watching, guys. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any questions regarding this tool, a knife, any questions at all regarding laws, anything, guys. I'm here for you. I'll hopefully be able to answer all of your questions. And if not, I'll try and point you in the right direction. As always, guys, thanks again for watching. Keep your edges sharp and your mind sharper, and I'll see you in the next one.